If I need to differentiate a function of a function, what I need to use is the formula known as chain rule. But if this function is a function of many variables, what can I use? All right, so what we're going to see today is the chain rule for functions of several variables. Let me start by recalling the chain rule for functions of a single variable. So the chain rule is useful to calculate the derivative of composite functions, which are functions of functions. So in this case, the chain rule says that the derivative of y is equal to the derivative of the outer function evaluated at the inner function times the derivative of the inner function. Now, for the purpose of generalizing to functions of several variables, it will be useful to use Leibniz notation. So in this case, we would say y is a function of x, and x is itself a function of t. And then we would write that the derivative of y with respect to t is equal to the derivative of y with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to t. All right, so now the question is, can we generalize the chain rule to functions of several variables? For instance, if we're given a function z, which is a function of two variables x and y, and that x and y are both functions of a new variable t. Can we write down a chain rule to calculate the derivative of z with respect to the variable t? The answer is yes, and that gives us the chain rule for functions of two variables in case 1. So let z be a differentiable function of two variables x and y, with x and y both differentiable functions of a variable t. Then we can calculate the derivative of the function z with respect to t by taking first the partial derivative of z with respect to x times dx dt plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y times dy dt. All right, so this is the chain rule formula for functions of two variables in the case where both variables are themselves functions of a single variable t. Now, we're not going to prove this uh, formula in this video. If you are interested, you can look at the textbook. Uh, the proof follows along the same lines as the proof for the chain rule uh, in the case of functions of a single variable. One thing to note is that this expression for the chain rule is very logical. What it's saying is that the derivative of z with respect to t is equal to first the partial derivative of z with respect to x times dx dt, same thing for y, and then adding up the result. So it's easy to remember because it just makes sense. All right, so let's look at an example. So suppose that I'm given the function z, which is equal to x squared y plus x, and then I have that x is a function of t given by e to the t, and y is equal to t squared. So both x and y are differentiable functions of t. And now suppose that I want to determine the derivative of the function z with respect to t at the point t equals to 0. So what I'm going to do is use this formula for the chain rule for functions of two variables to calculate this derivatives. This derivative. So there's a few things I need to calculate here. I need to calculate the partial derivatives of z and the derivatives of x and y with respect to t. So let me first calculate the partial derivative. So del z del x will be equal to 2 times x times y plus 1, while del z del y will be equal to x squared. Next, I need to calculate the derivatives of x and y with respect to t. So I'll get that dx dt is equal to e to the t, and dy dt is equal to 2 times t. And putting this together, I'll get the derivative of z with respect to t, which is equal to 2xy plus 1 times e to the t plus x squared times 2t. All right, and now I want to calculate the uh, value of this derivative at t equals to 0. So I could substitute here x and y, the actual value of the functions uh, of t for x and y, to get a big expression in terms of t. Or I can just evaluate everything at t equals to 0 directly, because I can evaluate the functions x and y at t equals to 0. So for I know that x at t equals to 0 will be equal to 1, and y at t equals to 0 is equal to 0, so I can substitute that inside my expression for the derivative of z with respect to t at t equals to 0. So I'll get for the first term, so 2xy becomes 0 because y is 0, plus 1, and e to the 0 is 1, plus x squared, which becomes 1, times 2t, which is 0. So the end result here is equal to 1. So that is the derivative of z with respect to t 
evaluated at t equals to zero. One thing to notice here is that I could have calculated these derivatives by first substituting the functions x and y directly in my expression for z to get the explicit expression for the function z as a function of t and just calculate the ordinary derivative of the resulting function of t directly. However, sometimes it's a lot faster to use the chain rule for partial derivatives, but either way you do it, you would get the same answer in the end. We can now proceed further and look at the more complicated case where x and y are themselves functions of two variables s and t. So let z be a differentiable function of x and y, with x and y both differentiable functions of s and t. Then we can calculate the partial derivatives of z with respect to s and t using the following chain rule formula. So del z del s will be equal to del z del x times the partial derivative of x with respect to s plus the same thing for y. And in the case of t, you first take the partial derivative of z with respect to x times del x del t plus the same thing for y. So again, these formula are very natural, so this should be fairly easy to remember. Now you can note here as well that you could have just substituted x and y directly inside the function f to get the explicit form of the function z as a function of s and t, and then calculate its partial derivatives directly. The end result would be the same as what you'll get by using the chain rule for partial derivatives. However, it's important to understand uh, the general formula for the chain rule because sometimes you do not have explicit form for the functions x and y. One example is if you start with a partial differential equation in Cartesian coordinates and you want to transform it into polar coordinates, which is something that we do fairly often in physics, then you have to use uh, these formula for the chain rule for partial derivatives. Let me now work through an explicit example. So let z be the function of two variables x times e to the y, and let x be equal to st and y be equal to s plus t. So they're both functions of two variables and everything is differentiable here. Now suppose that we want to calculate the partial derivative del z with respect to s. So we're going to use the formula here. So we know that this is equal to del z del x times del x del s plus del z del y times del y del s. So there's a few things we need to calculate here, the partial derivatives of z and the partial derivatives of y with respect to an x with respect to s. So let's first calculate the derivatives, partial derivatives of z, so del z del x in this case would be equal to e to the y and del z del y will be equal to x times e to the y. And then we need the partial derivatives of x and y with respect to the variable s. So del x del s would be equal to t, and del y del s would be equal to 1. So substituting this into the chain rule formula, we would get that del z del x here is ey times del x del s, which is t, plus del z del y, which is x times e to the y times 1. All right, and then if you wanted, you could substitute back uh, the functions x and y as explicit functions of s and t. For example, here we would get e to the s plus t times t plus x here, which is s times t, e to the y, which is s plus t. And that would give the explicit form for the partial derivatives del z del s in terms of the variables s and t. To conclude this video, let us look at the most general expression for the chain rule for functions of several variables. So let z be a differentiable function of n variables, x1, x2, x3, all the way to xn for some positive integer n, and let each xk for k running from 1 to n be themselves differentiable functions, but of m new variables, t1 to tm. Now, m here is also a positive integer, but it doesn't have to be the same as n. So you could think of z, say, as being a differentiable function of three variables, say x1, x2, x3, and have x1, x2, x3 be themselves functions of two new variables, t1 and t2. All right, so then the chain rule says that the partial derivative of z with respect to a chosen variable ti, say t1 or t2, is equal to the sum over k of the partial derivative of z with respect to xk times the partial derivative of xk with respect to ti. Now the formula looks complicated, 
but it is logical. It just makes sense. So what it is saying is that you first take the partial derivative of z with respect to x1 times partial of x1 with respect to ti. You do that for x1, x2, all the way to xn, sum up the result, and that gives you the partial derivative of z with respect to the chosen variable ti. Now one can notice that the two cases that we already studied are in fact particular cases of this general formula. The case 2 was the particular case with m and n both equal to 2, and case 1 was the particular case where n is equal to 2 and m is equal to 1, so there was a single t. Alright, so that concludes this video on the chain rule for functions of several variables.